to today's newspaper headlines, it seems that it's the end of the road for motoring presenter Jeremy Clarkson, as the announcement came out. And said that it's with deep regret the decision had been taken not to renew him. <laughs>
have here. He was born. He was born in 1836. And he was fired by Car Magazine, fired by Auto Car Magazine, fired by Scotland on Sunday, and somehow he managed to get fired by a Volvo dealership. Probably for driving too slowly, ladies and gentlemen, James Bay! Thank you, thank you, you're very kind. And, ladies and gentlemen, you probably can't see him from the back. But, I assure you, he is here. He was fired by Radio York Fired by Radio Leeds and fired by Radio Lancashire, it's Richard Hammond! Hello! Hello! Thank you! Thank you! And ladies and gentlemen, over here, he's, he's basically a shaved ape in a shirt. And he technically is the only one of us never to be fired by anyone. It's Jeremy Clarkson! Thank you so much. Anyway, we are all car journalists. And we have spent the last... Years being fired. Yes. But we have poured everything we know, everything we care about, into this show. Everything. And coming up now is a small montage of what you can expect over the next 12 weeks. Are we ready, gentlemen? I d honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Is that the size of the drop, or what's happened to his You're looking at magnificence! Help! This is bad! James says we've got to stop for fuel. Ah! I hate you! <laughs> he, he doesn't like us. Maybe leaking slightly. What a moron. You sank my limousine! I've lost one of my nose tampons! This is not a particularly cultural thing to do. I don't like the smell of tire smoke in the evening. Oi! Get back in! James is falling fire! There's no dignity in that, is there? No. And I'm going to prove that point because we're kicking off with this. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> the thing is, though, various supercar makers have now taken the sort of polar bear friendly technology from a Prius and they're now using it to create raw, naked speed. Now, I say the best of these 
hybrid hypercars is the mad, swivel-eyed McLaren P1. Whereas Richard Hammond, who's wrong... I'm not wrong. <laughs> he is, because he says the best is actually the rather boring Porsche 918. It's not boring! <laughs> yes, it is. It isn't. Mm. It isn't. <laughs> but whatever, we decided to meet up with the cars and settle this once and for all. we chose for this titanic duel was Portugal. Specifically, the international racetrack of the Algarve. When we arrived, mechanics from Porsche and McLaren pounced on our cars, fettling them for what was to come. Soon, McLaren and the Porsche were ready for some shakedown laps. And for these, we decided we'd drive each other's cars. or the savagery of the McLaren. Because it has rear-wheel steering and four-wheel drive, it feels wanted, it feels secure and safe. And that gives you confidence to play about. The grip is genuinely
your mind. I didn't think anything could be as exciting as that Porsche, but this, this is. What a car. I love it. Well? This is rubbish. I'm going to novel. But I'd rather that than being stuck in a telephone box with a panicking gorilla. Rubbish. It was trying to kill me. I mean, it's no, to hurt me. It wants to hurt oh, me. That's why I like it. Razor blade in the hands of a surgeon, sickle in the hands of a drunk peasant. Schooner of sherry, absinthe. Hi. What are you doing here? I am here because, gentlemen, I have in the back of that lorry something that will make your McLaren and your Porsche look like lumps of yesteryear. time a car or indeed any sort of thing gave me a fizz like the Ferrari the Ferrari <laughs> was obviously talking nonsense. But there's no getting around the fact that these three cars take automotive science to a new level. They use the latest green technology to squeeze as much speed as possible from every molecule of fuel. As a result, they're all capable of blasting way past 200 miles an hour whilst producing fewer harmful emissions than a family saloon. What we have here, then, are three incredible machines which, at a stroke, have made the traditional supercar look wooden and old-fashioned. Welcome, everyone, to the Hypercar Holy Trinity.
Played out there all day, but before we ended up in a three million pound crash, we decided to start the tests to see which of the cars was best. I came up with the first one mainly to annoy Gate Crasher May. Let's make the first test a drag race using electrical power only. Good idea. If it isn't a good idea, why not? Because you can't drive the Ferrari on electrical power only. No! No, but of course you can't, because it's, it's a curse system, like a Formula One car. It's got a V12 engine and an electric motor, but they're all integrated. They work together all of the time. You can't separate them. You should have thought about that, shouldn't you? Bad planning. With James reduced to the role of onlooker, we lined up the P1 and the 918 on the start line. But then, instead of revving the petrol engines, we shut them down. Three, two, one, go! It was me, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's not important, though, is it? Is it not? No, it's just not relevant. Right, right. In a drag race, it's irrelevant which car gets there first. Yeah, yours is the better milk float. <laughs> Back in the pits, Hammond had an idea for the next test. We've got to drive to the hotel, yeah, haven't yeah. we? It's about an hour away, and it gives us a chance to see what they're like on the road. That's a good point. Real world. That is a good point. I can't do that. I can't... Well, I can't drive the Ferrari on the road. 
Oi. Well, it's not registered. It is, it's got number plates. No, no, they're just, that's just pretend number plates. If they register it, it becomes second hand and they have to pay the tax. That's why it came in a lorry. So you can't drive it on the road either? Nobody can drive it. It's not road legal. Yet. Oh, no. Mate, that's. Oh, oh that is such a shame. It's an hour of. Oh, sorry, James. That is, that's really a rotten bit of luck because you've come a long way from Italy. Soon, Richard and I were enjoying the world's best ever commute. <laughs> Italian. Yes, 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 yes. Later on in part two, when these two have stopped dreaming up idiotic and irrelevant tests that it can't take part in, we shall see. We've got to tell everyone about our track. Yes, we have one. <laughs> this is the sort of place where you can drive cars at speeds that you can do on the road, but only if you want to go to prison afterwards. What, like 38 miles an hour? Well, 39, <laughs> maybe even 40 from time to time. Now, uh, we were hoping that we could bring it round the world with us, like the tent, uh, but unfortunately it's too heavy. <laughs> and, as you're about to see, too bitey. This is it. It's not a race circuit. It's not an airfield. It's not a road. What it is, is brilliant and fast and extremely dangerous. It even looks dangerous on a map because, as you can see, it's the exact same shape as the Ebola virus. Right, time now to show you what a lap looks like. And to do that, we've got a bit of a performance benchmark, a Ferrari 488. Take it away. Take it away. First up, it's the isn't straight, so called because it isn't straight. Second right on the isn't straight, we're into your name here corner. If you make a mistake, there's no runoff area, it's just woods. We've 
call this section old lady's house because it's right next to a house where an old lady lives. Get this 90 left right or you'll crash into a cage full of electricity. And you'll need to get the final 90 left right as well or you'll run into a field of sheep. So, trees, animals, a house, electricity. And because it's in England, usually quite a lot of moisture in the air. It really is the most dangerous track anywhere in the world. The car I've selected for my first lap of the Ebola Drome is this. The BMW M2. Back onto the isn't an unused 365 gram engine horsepower from the turbocharged 3 litre straight six. Get on with it. <laughs> now we go on to the really fast bit. This track was designed to trip cars up. There are fast corners, slow corners, drifty corners, and bumps. It's hard on the tires, it's hard on the brakes, it's hard on the engine. It's point and squirt and bark and yelp. It is vicious. But there is nothing here which has flummoxed the M2. This thing is an absolute masterpiece. Like I said, it is the best M car BMW's ever made. You may think it's mad to suggest the cheap... An exploded bomb. Yeah. <laughs> I said it's the most dangerous track in the world. Honestly, it makes Imola look like a duvet. Yeah. It really, honestly, it does. It anyway, does. Team, all the cars that we test at the Ebola Drome will do a timed lap. And to make sure it's a completely level playing field, they will all be driven by the same racing driver. Yeah. Clever. Oh, oh, that that is. It gave us some thought. How clever is that? Now, <laughs> thing is, Amazon, OK, insisted that the racing driver in question should be from this side of the pond. So we went to something called NASCAR. <laughs> and we found one. And we shipped him to England. And then we introduced him to the complicated procedure which involves turning right. <laughs> He's called Mike Skinner, but we know him simply as the American. Oh, there he is, looking utterly bewildered. Play skitter of wheel spin and immediately he's on to the isn't straight. He's through the final corner on the isn't straight. Into your name here. Coming up to old lady's house, no turbo lag at all. 
as he hammers down the bumpy back straight towards substation. One more 90 left to go through field of sheep. Now, to make sure that the M2 uh, wasn't on sort of the lap board all by itself, we got the American to put, uh, we, to put some other benchmark cars, well, we call them benchmark cars, he calls them communists, um, <laughs> around the track to see what's what. There they all are. Look. Now it's time to see where the M2 goes on that board. Let's have a look. Let's put it on. Oh. <laughs> It's, it's I think it's the best M car they've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, look, I prefer it to all the others that are quicker than it. It's with, yes, it's... <laughs> it's definitely the one you should have. If you want one that's slower oh, than all the other M cars. It's, it's better. It's only yeah. too... It's quicker than a Civic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you had a choice of M cars, if you lined them all up and said, yeah. I'd like the fastest, it wouldn't be that one. Shut up. Better in every single, <laughs> better in every single way. Stop you said, saying you said that. I don't care what. Have you driven one? Really? You, you know what? It's, it's a amazing, fabulous it? car. You've driven one. It is a brilliant car. It really honestly is. Yeah. This, week, this week, we are trying to find out which of the new breed of hybrid hypercars is the best. Yes, on day one at the track in Portugal, we established that the McLaren P1 is a mentalist, <laughs> that the Porsche 918 is very good milk float, and that the Ferrari, the Ferrari, can do nothing at all. Some of that is true. But now, day two. We began by lining up the three most exciting cars on the planet for the drag race of all drag races. Naturally, this meant engaging launch control, which in the McLaren takes about a fortnight. I have to have the drivetrain in track mode, the aero package in sport mode so that the rear end squats when I set off and gives me more traction. I have to have the DRS button pressed with my thumb to keep the rear wing open, which reduces drag, obviously. Launch control in the Porsche, left foot on the brake, hard, right foot on the throttle, hard. Light goes green, left foot off brake, ping! Launch button pressed for two seconds, left foot on brake, Right foot on throttle, press launch control, mash the throttle, within four seconds, release the brake. Three seconds later, I have full boost and I have to set off then within three seconds or the entire system disengages. I'm going to get this wrong, just so you know. I've got a lot to do in here. <laughs> to bring in a racing driver to see which of our cars could do the fastest lap. Our resident American said he wasn't interested because all three cars are probably communist. So instead, we went for a Belgian chap who's done Formula One and Formula E, Jerome D'Ambrosio. <laughs> took the cars out to get a sense of how they handled. <laughs> and when he'd finished, we were interested to hear his professional opinion. 
La McLaren, une voiture, je pense peut-être la plus difficile à piloter. Très facile de faire une erreur, c'est vraiment une voiture de grand garçon, il faut faire attention et, et donc pas facile de faire un tour. Je pense qu'elle est un peu moins efficace. À ce point, la word a reached us that Jeremy was taking liberties with the subtitling machine. Donc c'est. So we moved on to the big event, the timed laps. Once the mechanics had finished their preparations, the three speed traps were activated. And the Ferrari, the Ferrari, took its place on the start line. Look how good it looks there. James, you want to go and get a cup of tea? Well, we've warmed the track. Next, it was the turn of the Porsche 918. How much faster will it go because of the stripes, do you think? Much. Finally, it was the turn of the psycho killer, the trickiest, the edgiest of the three. But I was so confident it would win, I was prepared to take a massive gamble. If the McLaren isn't the fastest, you two can knock my house down. What? Knock it down. What, your house? Yeah, and I mean that. That's how confident I am that that will be the fastest. That's a you know we will do that. Yep. It's a serious bet. Yeah. 
fine. If that's not the fastest, yeah. we can knock your house down. Yep. You know where it is. You've yes. both been. Yeah. I'd love to knock it down. Here we go. A lot riding on this. that back to the tent thank you so much now i want to make it absolutely plain because i know this matters to anoraks all three cars were running on exactly the same sort of tires yes same tires same track same driver so the times are down to the cars. Yeah. Yep, and now it is time to reveal those times. And let me just make it absolutely clear. We don't know what they are. No. The producers have kept them from us. They're top secret. Yeah. So let's put the scoreboard up and let's begin with the Ferrari, the Ferrari, I believe. Let's see what it did it in, please. <laughs> 154.4. Okay. We don't know if that's any good, do we? No, no. But, no. <laughs> well, let's move on and do the Porsche next. Let's have a look. What did the Porsche do it in? And it didn't mince it, it was slower than the Porsche. I told you, it's just a melon ball. It's slower than my car, which was faster than your car. Yeah, it points over a second and it looks better. Yeah, it did, in my mirror, where oh. it belongs, get it smaller. It's a melon ball and it lost. Hammond, what? calm down. All right. Because now we must bring up the time that really matters. Yeah. The one where a lot's at stake. The McLaren, <clears throat> the McLaren P1. Are you uh, nervous? No. Sure. No. A little bit? Sure. No, no, I'm not well, nervous. Why be nervous? Because you could get like a shopping trolley and keep all your things in it. <laughs> move around, make some new friends under a bridge somewhere. Hammond. I'd say sell your body. Don't do that. Be quiet. <laughs> let's, let's bring up the time of the P1. Here we go. Oh, God. Where is it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh! for coming. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week in Johannesburg. Goodbye! <laughs>